Thank you. Good evening, Wareham. Welcome to the Town of Wareham Board of Selectmen meeting for March 8th, 2022. Before we have a roll call, I need to have someone make a motion to have Mr. Meniz elected clerk pro tem as we are not, Mr. Tro, uh, Mr. Tropiano and Mr. Bowen will not be joining us this evening. Motion so made. Second. Motion made and seconded to uh, appoint Mr. Meniz secretary or clerk pro tem. Is there any further discussion on the motion? I will go for a roll call vote then. Mr. Slavin? Yes. Mr. Teitelbaum? Yes. Mr. Meniz? Yes. And myself, yes, four zero zero. Now, Mr. Meniz, may I have a roll call, please? Um, excuse me one second. I got to flip back and forth. Selectman Slavin's here. Selectman Teitelbaum, uh, Chairman Whiteside, and myself, uh, Selectman Meniz, and also uh, Town Administrator Derek Sullivan. Thank you. Um, Mr. Sullivan, could you do the Pledge of Allegiance, please? The flag of the United States of America. America. To the public, the public for the state, 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 one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. For all. Thank you. Um, the first announcement I'm going to make um, is that we are not going to be having an executive session this evening due to unforeseen for circumstances. Um, and I'm also going to let the public know that I will continue to be running these meetings in a remote basis um, in, until I am no longer chair. You can count on them being remote. And then I will go to, let's see, Mr. Slavin, please, for announcements. Okay. Um, first off, uh, last week, uh, we had Cape Cod Coffee come before us. Uh, for me, usually I do a lot of background work and stuff, you know, for a company of business comes in, so I know who they are and what they are. I simply didn't get a chance. No, no excuse, bottom line, I didn't know who exactly they were. And I had a meeting uh, with Marion on a couple of subjects. And during the meeting, someone said, Alan, you guys are really lucky. And I said, why? Oh, you have Cape Cod Coffee coming into your town. And I says, okay. And they told me, he said, they're a great company. They're a great piece for your community and stuff. You really enjoy it. So uh, I'm kind of want to apologize a little bit because I guess I was told privately that I was really not a positive person initially at the meeting, uh, doing my usual due diligence, asking questions. But I didn't do my due diligence beforehand. So I like to kind of apologize to the Cape Cod coffee people. It wasn't that I was trying to make life difficult. I just didn't really know who they were. And I found out they're going to be an extremely valuable person and company to our community. So I want to let the public know what we're getting. And the other thing is I'd like to thank everybody that came out for Mr. Warren's uh, ribbon cutting. Uh, we had, uh, I think, we had several selectmen there. I think got three of us actually. And uh, Senator Pacheco, uh, Senator Gifford couldn't, excuse me, Representative Gifford couldn't make it, but her husband came to take care of that. And uh, it really was worthwhile because it made, uh, had a chance to have several contacts with when someone just died. And um, talking about several other projects coming down the line, I'll talk about a little bit later. And I think that's all I have for right now. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Teitelbaum? Uh, no, the dog wants to talk, but I'm not going to let her. <laughs> okay. uh, come on. <laughs> Mr. Meniz? No, I'm good on announcements. Thank you. Thank you. And I already gave my announcements. So we will go to town residents. Comments. Uh, Tricia Works, please, Mr. White. Hello. Good evening. We can't Good see evening. you, but we can hear you. Yeah, I just now, there was the top of my head. There you there. are. 
<laughs> so I didn't raise my hand. You called on me. Oh, you did have your hand raised. Hand was up. Your hand was up. You don't need was. to talk to us. Goodbye. No. Okay. Goodbye. goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss um, Annie Hayes, please. Um, okay. Good evening. Hi. Uh, I have two things that are of concern. Um, one is you will remember perhaps that at the town meeting discussing the golf course, I had mentioned that my concern was that as a um, member of the town who was helping to pay for it, along with many others, um, I felt prohibited. It was prohibitive to have to have perhaps $50, something like my pocket to walk on the golf course. And I had asked you, um, Ms. Whiteside, about the possibility of a trail. And you said that you believed it was possible. And um, I'm hoping that you will address it. I see that you're looking to have an advisory committee, but I really hope that that is going to be uh, a possibility that actualizes for all the people of where I'm to participate in. And the second is of more grave concern. I'm also um, requesting that as representatives of our town, you would feel it appropriate to make a statement of um, support for the Ukrainian people in recognition of the struggle that they're engaged in. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I normally do not respond to people However, I would like to ask this board to make a motion to do exactly what Ms. Hayes is suggesting. Do you want Mr. Teitelbaum to repeat what he said last weekend, last week? Yes, that would be fine. Mr. Teitelbaum, please. Yeah, uh, I, I suppose you could take what I said last week as a statement of support for the Ukrainian as people. As a statement of support for the Ukrainian people. Yeah, that was weird. Um, what I said last week was actually critical of US policy towards Putin going back 20 years. But I would certainly say that everybody who has been uh, assaulted, murdered, scarred, poisoned, uh, invaded, uh, and especially now the Ukrainian people certainly deserve uh, the support of the, everybody in the world. Uh, not just the town of Wareham Board of Selectmen, not just the United States, not just NATO, but everybody needs to decry this. I've been advocating for much stronger approaches to this than some, uh, but in any event, uh, even if you don't want to uh, crack somebody's knuckles and, and risk you know, further escalation, I think it's important that people take a look at the empire of Russia because that's what we're seeing this become. Uh, and treat it with disdain. Don't send them your money. I'm glad that we, uh, in this country, finally got around to choking off their oil imports today. So, uh, may I have a, that was a motion, Mr. Teitelbaum? Yes. <laughs> Is there a second to that motion, please? Second. Thank you. Just, just one comment, if, Mike. Yes, no, uh, um, one for the, one moment for the further discussion. Go ahead, Mr. Slavin. Uh, I would ask people, uh, we don't do this anymore. We don't study history. Uh, no, we and, but therefore, we make the same mistakes time after time. If you would like to spend a little time, take a look back at World War II, way back in the 1930s with the German and what they were doing and how they did it. This is the first step along the way. Uh, mm -hmm. We all should be very scared that this could escalate into uh, probably a horrific result at the end of the day, because as more countries get involved with this, we're pushing a line that's going to be very difficult to come back from. But again, uh, I remember when I was studying the World War II, uh, Hitler would go into one country and they would back away. It was actually the British, uh, who I can't forget the name, I think it was uh, Chamberlain, who was prime minister at that time. Uh, he kept uh, basically giving in to the Germans each time. And eventually the Germans bombed England as well. So be very careful here. We have someone who I think is a at a point where he's put his foot down on something and he can't take that step back because we lose, he would lose faith and probably would lose his life at the end of the day. So 
again, don't give in as far as I'm concerned, but definitely don't let them go any farther than where they have because the next step could be very fatal for all of us. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Manise, do you have to add anything to it? Uh, this you know, we support, I support the, the country, uh, country of Ukraine and the people, and um, I have to give them a lot of credit for digging in and um, hope for the best. And hopefully, you know, the world will support um, the Ukraine and things will, like I say, work out. Thank you. Um, I'm now going to go for a roll call vote that there is a motion that Mr. Teitelbaum has made. And um, Mr. Slavin? Yes. Mr. Teitelbaum? Yes. Mr. Moniz? Yes. And myself, yes. Thank you, Ms. Hayes. And Thank you. Thank you all. Good evening. I see no one else who is looking to speak to us. So we will have Ms. Hayes leave the meeting and we will bring in David Rogers, please. Dave Rogers, yep. We lose Jim. I don't know, where'd he go? We have lost the temporary. Yeah, we, he bounced back into the um, attendees. Can you let Jim back in, please, Mr. White? Oh, there he is. Okay. They put um, me in the attendees room, I think. Yeah, I you, you ended up there for a minute. That's okay. Um, Mr. Meniz, would you introduce? Hello. Hi, Mr. Rogers. Um, Mr. Meniz is going to introduce you to us, and then we will um have you speak to us about what it is that you would like to do and um then we will ask you questions okay sure all right mr Meniz. um uh, this is uh mr david rogers who put in for the cable advisory committee um term to expire upon completion of the contract signing and um uh, mr i guess i don't know if i should do this or mr rogers would you like to speak to the board um well first time i'd like to say good evening and i hope everybody's doing well thank you for the invite <clears throat> and um i was uh, approached by dan butler i'm assuming everybody knows dan butler and um so here i am and um very new to this as far as how the procedure goes but uh walk me through it okay did when you talked with i'm sorry i'm gonna jump in no, um, when you talked with Mr. Butler, did he explain to you what it is that we need to have you do on the cable advisory committee? Um, yeah, I guess it requires it to be uh, myself, uh, himself, and I guess one other person to be on this committee and uh, to help, I guess, promote and improve the uh, the cable for the town of Wareham. As well, uh, no. no, you're actually going to be um, dealing with the negotiating of the contracts for I got the you. town. Okay. okay. So that's that. Um, Mr. Slavin, do you have any questions? No, also, I think we missed uh, just so you know, board comments after. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll come back to that. No problem. <clears throat> Thank you. No, no questions. Mr. Thank Teitelbaum, you for... any questions, sir? Apply. No, no questions. I know uh, Dan recommended them strongly. Thank you. Mr. Meniz, any questions? No, I do not. Okay, and neither do I. I will accept a motion. Um, I'll make a motion that uh, we appoint David Rogers to the Cable Advisory Committee for a term to expire upon completion of the contract signing. Second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I will go for a roll call vote. Mr. Slavin? Yes. Mr. Teitelbaum? Yes. Mr. Meniz? Yes. Myself, yes, four zero zero. Thank you. And good evening, Mr. Rogers, and thank you very much for um, volunteering. No problem. Thank you very much for your time. Thank You're you. welcome. Miss, um, Mr. White, would you let in Nicole Lacurto, please?
Hello. She's in there. Hello. Oh. Good evening. Hi. We can't see you yet. There, you there go. we go. There you go. Thank you. Mr. Menise, go ahead and introduce her, please. Okay. This is um I'm jumping between screens, so excuse me. Um, this is uh, Ms. Cole Accardo, who's applied to be associate member of the Conservation Commission for a term to expire no later than June 30th, 2023. And um, Ms. Accardo, would you like to address the board? Um, yeah, so, um, well, thank you for your time, uh, for inviting me to the meeting. And I don't really, this is all new to me too, so I don't quite know the process of everything, but um, I know Carol Melanson and um, she told me a little bit about what the Conservation Commission does. And I know I have a lot to learn, but um, I'm a Wareham resident and I don't plan on moving anytime soon. So I just want to do whatever I can to keep this to be a place where I want to live. Excellent. Have you attended any of the meetings I've attended two of the Conservation Commission meetings. Okay, right. And we did get a letter of recommendation from the Conservation Commission recommending that you be appointed. Right. Mr. Slavin, do you have any questions, sir? No, just thank you for applying. You'll join my wife. <laughs> Mr. Teitelbaum, any questions, sir? Uh, no, thank you for stepping up. Mr. Menise, any questions, sir? Um, no, uh, I, I did. And par, um, for a short while, the Conservation Commission meeting last week, and uh, saw Ms. Lacurto there. And I just like everyone else, thank you for stepping up. No problem. I'm happy to do it. Okay, I, I have no to... questions of you either, so I will accept a motion. Uh, well, if she's friends with Carol, we're in trouble. So. <laughs> <laughs> Peanut gallery, shush. <laughs> I'll accept a motion. I'll make a motion to appoint. Nicole Accurdo to be an associate member of the Conservation Commission for a term to expire no later than June 30th, 2023, an associate member of the Conservation Commission. Second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I will go for a roll call vote. Mr. Slavin? Yes. Mr. Teitelbaum? Yes. Mr. Menise? Yes. And myself? Yes. Um, thank you very much. The paperwork for your um, um, appointment, as well as for Mr. Rogers, I forgot to tell him, um, will be available in the Selectman's office on Thursday. Okay. It's on the third floor. We are closed on Friday, so um, try and get sworn in uh, maybe Monday or Tuesday before the next meeting. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for stepping up and, and for volunteering. Thank you. Good night. Um, Mr. White, we are expecting Mr. Rasmussen and Mr. Downey, please. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Mark. How are you? Hey, good. And Stuart is here someplace, so we'll just wait for him to appear. Good evening. I need to check on the munchkins real quick. I'm, yep, I'm not leaving because of Mark, I yep. promise. Ms. Yeah, Mr. Sure, okay. Rogers, right. <laughs> Mr. Rogers, um, Town Hall opens at 8. I would say 8.15 is a safe bet for the documentation that you're looking for, okay? Thank you. Great. All right, gentlemen, we have with us uh, Mark Rasmussen and Stuart Downey. Um, I invited them here to do a presentation on the plans for the Onset Bay Center um, and also to introduce Mr. Downey. Yep. So. Um, floor is yours, gentlemen. Well, thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Um, hi, everybody. Um, 
you all know me. I think it's, I, I looked at my calendar. It's been about six years since we first came to start talking about this idea of the Onset Bay Center. And I wanna thank the board again for your constant and strong support of this um, project, which is now fully flourishing in Wareham. So um, I wanna give most of my time tonight to uh, Stuart, uh, but I first wanna introduce him and let him know, let you all know a little bit about um, him and his team and what's coming up this summer in Onset. So um, Stuart Downey started with the Buzzards Bay Coalition just about six weeks ago. Uh, he's new on the job. Uh, he comes to us though after 16 years of outdoor exploration experience, uh, first starting at the UK Sailing Academy in England. Uh, you'll hear from a moment, he's not from around these parts. Uh, so we got Stuart from England uh, for the UK Sailing Association. He led summer camps and school trips in the UK, France and Spain, all focused on building youth leadership and outdoor exploration. Uh, before coming to the US, we, he last served in the United Arab Emirates, uh, doing youth development training for teenagers in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. So uh, an entire career built around youth development, outdoor exploration skills, environmental stewardship um, building um, all around the world. And we're very lucky that he found himself living in South Plymouth, very close by. And he introduced himself to us last year as a volunteer at Onset, helping us with safety training. Uh, safety protocols and safety procedures have been a big part of Stuart's career. Um, and so he was really helpful last season uh, to Kat and her team down at Onset, uh, even in that limited year that we had last summer. So I, I hope you all can, you can, do a, you can do a share screen, right? We can show you some slides? Yes. Okay, great, because I want to turn it over to Stuart um, and just, you know, tee it up a little bit more by saying, you know, many of you, you know, we had the, uh, the uh, groundbreaking last September. It was great to finally cut a ribbon and open the building, but, you know, we, have, we, we launched this thing into two years of COVID. So we've had two very limited summers where we did everything we could do for programming with kids, and, and I think our staff and the support we had from Mass Maritime Cadets were able to do a lot under COVID, but now we're looking forward to a season which is not COVID limited. We are looking forward to a full season. And what you're gonna hear from Stuart is what a full season of activity is gonna look like at onset. And um, I'm really excited. So Stuart, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for having me. Um, so I should have, uh, I think I've got my screen shared now. You should all be able to see that. Uh, yep, what yep. I wanted to talk about was some upcoming events that we have. Uh, 2022 programming, scholarships, new activities that we're bringing to Onset Bay Centre, uh, and, and just to end on, uh, on the exciting things happening at Wicketts Island. Um, so let's go into upcoming events. So we have Wild for Wareham coming on May 7th. You might remember last year, uh, this happened over a week period, um, and it's, a, uh, it's a, a partnership between Buzzers Bay Coalition Mass Audubon and Wareham Land Trust, where we try and engage them in the outdoors with lots of fun activities, guided activities. Um, so we're gonna be doing that again, but we're gonna be doing it on one day, May 7th. Um, so that's gonna be hosted at the Onset Bay Center. We'll have tables here, and we'll also have lots of activities to sign up to um, for people to do guided trips, guided kayak tours to Wicketts Island, that kind of thing getting people out, uh, out on the water and out in our natural resource. We also have uh, what, we're, what I'm currently calling a community day on May 14th, which is just the next weekend. Um, and I really kind of see that as the opening of the Onset Bay Center for the, for the start of programming. Um, so we're gonna put on a bunch of free activities, everything from um, sailing trips to uh, kayak safety talks, to how to strap a kayak to your roof safely when traveling and trying to bring uh, things like that. So we want to really open it up to the community and offer a lot of free things. Um, we're going to have uh, Diane from Diane's Art Farm down here running some free art classes in the center, uh, uh, lots of different things like that with that community day. Um, so quite exciting. Um, now moving on to spring programs. For the first time, we're going to offer an April Vacation Bay Explorers program really sort of a, um, you know, a, 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 a 10 spaces where you can drop your, drop your kids off for the day and let them experience some really fun adventures through April. We will try and get out on the water, but we will be trying to stay uh, pretty dry in April, I think. 
um, but we will have some some fun activities for them to take part in during that vacation period. We are continuing our boat building apprenticeship um, Tuesdays and Thursdays for Wareham High Schools, uh, working in co cohesion with Wareham Public Schools. We're also going to begin a Wareham Public School sailing program. Um, so really the Tuesdays and Thursdays, the boat building happens and we wanna do a Monday and Wednesday um, sailing school, sailing class. The idea behind that is to plant the seed in middle school and high school students for creating a Wareham high school sailing team competing against other regions and winning. Um, <laughs> we also uh, have a adult sailing programs will be starting May 17th. We're gonna have art classes with Diane, slate art, paint and sip, sunset paint and pizza, some fun different things happening off uh, in our location. And uh, yoga classes are going to be starting up in the McFadden Center, up in the up in the top area, top sort of function space at Onset Bay Center as well. Um, so that's a, a little look at spring programs, and we're always looking for new things and adding new things and utilizing this space. One thing I, I'm sure you're aware of um, uh, CYE Community Youth Empowerment um, with uh, Juan. Um, we've given him space at our at our center to use. At, at no cost for, for the programs that he runs. He suggested that we could uh, offer our, you know, offer our space with Wi-Fi to kids as an after school homework location. So kids that have trouble doing homework. So we're looking at doing that. Um, that's something we're gonna look at with Juan to open up the space for uh, sort of three till five in the afternoons. Um, all right, moving on to Youth summer programs. Um, so youth summer programs, we are we have already gone live with uh, registrations to Wareham residents. I'm, I'm sure you're aware we open up to Wareham residents first. Um, so two weeks, it's only open to Wareham residents. So that's open live right now. So if you want to sign up your kids for the summer, do it now. We have doubled the amount of uh, capacity compared to last year. Um, so Bay Explorers full day, full week sessions, um, 20 spaces available. We've done, a, um, we've done a split in the sessions before we sort of had eight to, eight to 12 year olds um, all together. We're gonna do 10 spaces for eight to 10 year olds, 10 spaces for 11 to 13 year olds. So that ages can be um, a little bit more, work a little better together with those age splits. And then we also, uh, we've also got the sailing programs running in half days, that's a youth sailing and a teen sailing as well. Um, evening Stuart, summer programs, yes. Stuart, one question. You said, uh, could you back up a slide please? Yep. Um, how do you sign up? Where do you sign up? How so do you-, if you go, Great question. If you go to the um, savebuzzardsbay.org, our website, click on Onset Bay Center, uh, click youth programs or events and you'll find all the events there ready to register. And what about costs? Costs, so um, but it's basically for the full week for the summer is 250 for the week for each session. There's a little discount in week two of the summer because July 4th falls on the Monday. We won't be open July 4th, we'll be celebrating. Um, so the th that week is 200. Um, I will go on to talk about scholarships on one of the slides because there is okay. a great opportunity for low-income families uh, to get a to get a lot of the programming at low or free of yep. cost. Um, evening summer programs are also coming up, so we're going to have adult sailing. We're going to have adult windsurfing programs. Windsurfing is a program we're adding this uh, this summer to Onset Bay Center. We're going to have adult kayaking programs, adult paddleboarding programs, family sailing, family kayaks adult paddleboard yoga, uh, as well as family charter fishing with Maureen and charter fishing, and many, many more things to come with our summer programming as we build out different options, but already a lot, a lot of things that we have planned. Um, scholarships, so as you, uh, uh, as you mentioned, um, there is preference given to where residents of Wareham for our scholarships. Um, households earning between 45,000 and 63,000 per year will receive a 75% discount on the season rate. 
Households earning 45,000 per year will receive a 100% discount on our programming. Um, that is limited to two weeks maximum uh, signing up your child to, but I, you know, please get on our website and sign up to these scholarships. They are there, we want them to be used, uh, especially to Wareham residents. Um, new activities. So you, you'll see something new on the bay uh, this summer. We have a Drascom gig sailing boat. It's actually being shipped from the UK because I couldn't find it in America, um, but it is a Royal Navy training vessel. You can see a picture of it on the slide there. It's a three sail gaff rigged boat, mm. but the point of it is that it is a very stable boat that can hold 12 people at the same time. So great for family sailing trips and things like that. Um, it has an engine, so it has its own safety uh, safety system set up within the boat, which is great. It's also a raising, it has a raised keel, which means any of the sandbars that are out here, we're not going to have to worry about too much. Um, yeah, so just a really great addition to the bay for adding, um, adding a, a, a great resource for different people to be able to go sailing. Uh, also, a great adaptability boat for so, so people with different um, dis disabilities that will be able to sail on this boat. That's kind of one of the points of its design. Um, so very exciting. And as I said, windsurfing is coming. We also have some 420s being donated by Mass Maritime, which is the boat we need for Wareham High School sailing um, to become part of the sailing team for the region, so region racing. And then finally, I just wanted to end with Wicket's Island. Work on the pier begins in May. So we will have the pier repointed looking great, uh, a float on that pier as well. So, you know, nice space to come up and, and tie your boat to. Um, and we are, we have a really great team coming from Tabor Academy to help with grass seeding, weeding, and sort of sorting out the island weekly, pretty much from now till school end. Um, so they're gonna be really helping get that island prepped and ready for the public use that it should be used for. Um, as well as some signage that we'll be preparing to, to pass some information about how the island has been used in the past and how it should be used now. Um, and I think that's it from me. Thank you so much for giving me this time. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start off with a couple of questions. Um, what is a raised keel as opposed to a centerboard? Uh, really, it's just a weighted centerboard. Mm -hmm. So it has it has the so it, it, it is what a New Englander would call a centerboard. You can pull it up and then you can pull it down. Yes, but with a winch because of its weight. So it acts, right, the same, but it's it still... acts like a acts like a, a weighted keel because of its it's it's a metal big metal thing. I got it. Um, so okay. it can do that leverage. Yeah. And then the second question I have is, where are you doing windsurfing? Because that harbor becomes so congested that I yeah. think it's kind of a dangerous idea sorry so sure no and we've thought about that so with windsurfing there is a especially with beginners we're going to be doing it on on Burgess Point across the other side in some shallow water over there mm -hmm. um I'm pointing because I it literally is over there for, <laughs> me, for me right now the um and we can uh, with beginner windsurfing there is a system to tether the board so basically anchor the boards through the center board through the universal joint where the sail attaches. So the boards only go around in a circle. So I can really stick them to one location while people are learning and not untether them until they know what they're doing. They're also covered by a safety craft too. Okay, and I'm gonna ask the question that I know Sandy Slavin would like to ask. Um, how are you attaching them to the floor of the bay? Just a, just a, just a weighted sand bottle, basically. Okay, so it's, you're not drilling holes in the in the bay or anything like that. No, 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 no. no. Okay, thank it's you. The equivalent of an anchor, but less destructive to the seabed. Thank you very much, Mr. Slavin. Uh, I've, we've met uh, Stuart uh, about a week or so ago, and Mark, obviously, when they did a presentation to the uh, different members of the community that are involved with the uh, facility. Etc. I don't have any real questions. I would make one comment that we actually have a very uh, unique uh, area in Little Harbor where the water is extremely shallow for a large distance, and we have a lot of wind surfers that are there all season long. 
and you may want to expand the program if the town will allow it, because I think the training in there would be excellent. We always have wind in, in Buzz's Bay in one way or another. Again, thank you very much for the continued hard work that this particular project has done that makes us all proud. And I'm hoping everybody in us, the rest of where I have the surrounding communities take advantage of what's available. Thank you again. Mr. Teitelbaum. Uh, <clears throat> no, I've supported the mission of uh, this whole Onset Bay project since the beginning. Uh, it, it's proven to be worthy, which is what we said in the, uh, you know, when it was proposed to us, when we went to town meeting, uh, you know, even when we had to defend a lawsuit. Uh, these are good programs. They familiarize kids with the water. Uh, it's important for their safety uh, to learn how to swim, to learn how to use boats. You know, when you live on the water, you need to know how to use the water. Uh, I think that just should just go without saying. And I'm glad that we've got this, you know, public and NGO partnership going here where we can bring these programs, make them affordable to Wareham kids. Uh, you know, people called it a yacht club. And the interesting thing is, well, you know, in some ways it is, uh, but it's a yacht club for all. It's not a yacht club for the exclusive. And, you know, I'm glad that we've supported your mission and I hope the board will continue to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Meniz, any comments or questions, sir? Yeah, everything sounds great. Your programming's good, and um, it's kind of exciting. Um, boat building apprenticeship uh, program. Where are you doing that? School or? So, yeah, so the kids actually come here and use our boathouse, our lower floor, yeah. our lower deck here. Um, it works really well. They they built two little uh, skiffs um, over the over the fall, and they hope to build a um, a second a third skiff in the spring and turn one of the previous built skiffs into a sailing boat. Um, right. So really right. exciting stuff. Great, and the sailing team, you know, that's, I, I think that's great because I, I've often scratched my head saying, you know, we live on the water and it would be great, great to have something like that. And um, so thank you on that. And um, maybe we can work into rowing later down the road or something. You know? But thank you. Thanks for everything. Thank you. Thank you. And I will just add uh, to what the gentlemen have said. Uh, you guys at Buzzards Bay have done an extraordinarily wonderful thing with this project in, in Onset Harbor and with Wicket's Island. You have offered opportunities to many people. You've made the pro programs available to many people. You are conscious of the fact that this is not the richest community in the world, but everything that you have suggested tonight, just as it's exciting. I wish I was 13 and so I could learn how to <laughs> kite sail or something like that. No, I really don't, but um, <laughs> you, you know, anything that any one of us, I'm sure I'm speaking for all of us, anything that any one of us can do to help you uh, engage the public, let us know. Um, and I just would ask, are you getting information into the schools directly? Uh, particularly the lower grades. Okay. Yeah, we, yeah, we talk. We talk with Jane over at the Wareham Public Schools. She's responsible for a lot of the after schools and summer programming. Um, but yes, I think we can do a little better. I'd like to get flyers and posters up. I think that would be a really good idea because, you know, not everybody has internet. Not everybody is aware, and I think the fact that you are offering such generous. Uh, scholarships will help a lot of kids see something that they would never be able to see other than through your scholarship program. So thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. Do you gentlemen have any questions or comments for us? No, I, I would love to just underscore where, where you started, Judy, which is the website, savebuzzardsbay.org, because we really, uh, Stuart's right, uh, we want to give away every dollar of the scholarship fund and we want to give it to Wareham Kids. So let's everybody please go to the website. We want to get registrations up soon. So save buzzardsbay.org, click on Buzzards Bay Center. And the last thing I would say is just to, to thank Wareham voters again. Uh, the work that you're going to see on Wicket's Pier and the landing, the new float, and all the new access improvements is funded by CPA vote from last year. So that is a ton of Wareham support that made that possible. So excited to see that happening too. Thank you. I guess we're all set, gentlemen. Thank you and um, have the rest of the evening off. Thank you Take very care. much. Thank we'll you. see you soon. Yeah, thank you so much. Nice to meet you, Stuart.
Bob, could we have uh, Ken Buckland, please? Enter the meeting. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Doing fine, thank you. Good. Um, could you speak to us about what it is that you, briefly, give us a brief one, because we had a long meeting tonight. Briefly, what it is that you need from us, Mr. Buckland. Sure. Um, this actually started with uh, when Derek Sullivan asked uh, Gary Buckminster and myself to come up with ideas for uh, the Massachusetts Department of uh, Tourism and Travel that has a capital program with significant money available for improvements. Uh, we decided that the onset uh, ban shell would be a, the perfect option for that. <clears throat> and we're going for the maximum amount of 250,000. This would be added to the 300,000, uh, approximately 300,000 that we have available uh, from uh, uh, the town meeting article to uh, improve the, uh, the, the ban shell. It's, it's in a little rough shape right now and, and needs some help. Uh, with the uh, 250 and the 300, we'll, uh, we'll be halfway to uh, uh, replacing the, uh, the shell since the uh, replacement cost is about a million apparently. But we're, we're not going to replace it. We're going to uh, fix it up. And uh, for that uh, money that we're looking for from the state, we need letters of uh, support. Uh, I've got the letters from the uh, OBA, uh, Onset Bay Association, the um, Regional Chamber of Commerce, uh, and uh, the state rep, uh, uh, right? Susan Gifford. Yeah. Said that she Who's hearing? Again? So I can hear you, Bob, I think. Go ahead, Ken. So we're looking for additional uh, uh, support letters from the town administrator and the board of selectmen. And that's what I'm coming to you tonight for. Okay. Uh, Mr. Slavin, do you have any questions of this gentleman? Everybody's in. No. Thank you. Mr. Uh, no. Menees, do you have any questions? I, I'm sorry, I started to say no, not for that. Oh. Um, the question I would have is that we really need to get out to the public when we run into projects where uh, the information that we originally start with, such as we're going to replace the band shell, turns out to be excessively expensive and the monies that, like, say, CPA came forward with would cover maybe a fourth of the actual project. And then the public thinks that, you know, the town and administration hasn't done anything, was not doing what they said they would do. And I think it was a big surprise to all of us when we found out that to replace that band shell is going to be $1.4 million, as Ken referred to. And we only were providing 333,000, which is not even close to getting much done. So we have to restore rather than replace. And I think this is an excellent idea to get enough money to make it really do, make it worthwhile. My philosophy in life is always do it once and do it right. And when you have to compromise and cut back, sometimes it doesn't work at all. And ask Ken also, would you like a, a letter of support from SERPED as well? That'd be great. The more letters, the better. Okay, I'll take care of that. For, we're asking for letters from uh, performers who uh, might use the, the shell as well. Okay, I'll get you a letter from Serpent as well. Thank you. Mr. Thank you um, just when when I was going through the, the grant, um, our Regional Tourism Council is the Plymouth. If my, am I correct? That's right. Um, Will they be supporting us? And we will ask them if they can get a letter in on time. Yeah, so I, I just, uh, you know, I was going through it and I, I was looking for it under Cape Cod and which wasn't there. So, so I went through it. And um, does, what does that, how does that impact the, the grant application? We just put in that, in that grouping under Plymouth County. Yeah, the, the office, uh, the state office is looking for uh, who uh, we fall under, the regional uh, tourism agency, and um, <clears throat> that turns out to be Plymouth. Okay, I guess it's a um, Convention and Visitors Bureau, but, but thank you. I just, you know, I saw that. 
um, sounds good and uh, wish, uh, hope for the best. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Teitelbaum, do you have any questions or comments, sir? No, let's go, you know, if we need to grab state money for this, let's go get it. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mr. Buckland, you said that you were going to ask the performers. Have you asked the Onset Bay Association for? Um... Yes, the Onset Bay Association has submitted a letter already. Oh, okay, great. All right. All right. I will accept a motion which would enable me to write a letter on behalf of the Board of Selectmen supporting this. Okay. <laughs> okay, you all say, all three said it at the same time. Yep. <laughs> Alan's motion with Peter's second, I think. Yep. Um, sure. All right. Whatever. Are there any further? Is there any further discussion or questions just, from? Just one other question again for Ken. You want a letter from the Plymouth County Advisory Board? Yes, if it's possible. Yeah, if they have the time to do it by the time the, the application is due. Well, I chair that executive committee also, so that shouldn't be a problem. All right. Sounds good. All right. Remind me of tomorrow. Sir. Send me a little email so I don't forget either one of them. I'll send it right now. So Thank what you. is the deadline for the letter, Ken? 31st. Uh, March 28th. Yeah, OK. So if I get it to um, Monday, that would be fine. That'd be fine. Yes, thank okay, you very great. much. All right, thank you. All right, there's a motion made and a second. Um, there's any further discussion? I will go for a roll call vote. Mr. Slavin. Yes. Mr. Teitelbaum. Yes. Mr. Moniz. Yes. Myself, yes, 400. Zero, zero. Thank you very much. Good Thank evening, you. Ken. Thank you so much for joining us. And now we will have Jamie Rebin Buckminster join us, please. And she will be doing two presentations. Jamie had pointed out to me that on the agenda, it might be slightly misleading. Um, we're not talking about a redesign that you're gonna see. We're talking about the concept of the ideas that have been thrown out so far for the Bayside Park uh, review. And I just wanted to clarify that. Good evening, Jamie. Can you identify yourself and start your engines? Thanks. Hi, I'm J uh, Jamie Repham Buckminster. I work for Community Opportunities Group, which administers uh, the town's community development block grant. Um, I think first on the agenda was the FY21 grant announcement. Um, this actually, I don't have anything fancy to show. It's just good news. Um, the town was recently notified that it will receive uh, the $825,000 that we applied for. Uh, back in September for the fiscal year 2021 grant. Um, just as a quick refresher, that'll uh, fund uh, excuse me, Highland Avenue sidewalk improvements in Onset Village, uh, a study of the integrity of the building at 195 Main Street, um, public social services, uh, Damien's Place Food Pantry, uh, Turning Point Homelessness Prevention Services, and, and a new domestic violence prevention program at the Wareham Police Department are all included in that. Uh, right now, we're working on startup tasks for this grant. You'll see a legal posting this week for our notice of intent to request the release of funds, which uh, starts a public timeline a timeline for public comment. Uh, once that's all done, we can continue with the additional uh, startup tasks. So it takes us takes us several weeks to actually get a grant set up and, and going. So um, we're, we're working on that now. Um, when you say get it going the, for disbursement? Correct. Okay. Yep. Um, so okay. we're working on that, those tasks now. And as an aside, we have not heard when the fiscal year 2022 grant is going to be due. So we're hoping that that means it'll be September again and not, you know, a surprise, you know, we're going to have to have you apply for a grant immediately, but they're good with letting us know. And I know DHCD is talking about it. So we'll, we'll, we'll know soon and I'll be coming back to you guys to to get you to uh, help out with that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, gentlemen, do you have any questions of this young lady, Mr. Slavin? No, questions or comments? Fine. Thank you. Um, Mr. Teitelbaum, any questions or comments, sir? Nope, I know the drill. Thank you very much, Mr. Moniz. Questions or comments, sir? Um, yeah, we still have funds remaining from 2020, 2019, and 2018 to be expended. 
the 2018 grant is done. Um, I'm sorry, I, I do have a couple of things to say about the 2019 and 2020 grant, um, but I didn't want to overstep open meeting law because the, the agenda itself, okay, itself so, says FY21. Yeah. Um, but I asked a question. So if you want to address it like at the next meeting or something or, or reach out to it, me. It's up to you. I just didn't want to overstep. I, I would prefer that she ask answer it at a different time because it's listed as the 2021 grant review. And so we would be criticized for not having the 2019 and 20 information on the agenda. Well, well, that's fine. So if you could put it on and I can come back agenda. if you'd like me to. Yeah, so, could you, you know, come back next week? Us, that'd be great because it's good to be absolutely. informed. Thank you. Yeah, so absolutely. And, and I, I, I want you guys to have the information so that when people ask you questions, you know, you, you have the information to tell them. So, so Jamie, what years would it be, please? Just uh, FY19 and FY20, the FY18 grant is complete. It's in a close, uh, close out right okay, now. Okay, thank so. you very much. But actually, I'll put it on for all three and you can explain what all of Okay, that perfect. That's fine thank with you. me. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Moniz, um, but I think oh, I don't want right. to state that no, line. That's fine. Okay, great. Ms. Buckminster, um, can you now speak to the really sort of exciting program that you have? I can. I can. I'm very excited to talk to you guys about this. Can Can you see my screen now? I apologize. Yes. Okay. Great. So this is a uh, slideshow that uh, Cassie Bethany, a landscape architect and our project manager from Weston and Sampson, uh, created. Um, and it was shown, a version of it was shown to our working group. Um, we convened the working group last month, um, but oh. you'll meet Cassie uh, later on down the line when we uh, submit drawings for you guys to weigh in on. Um, so as I said, we convened the working group back in February uh, in an effort to get regular feedback and to foster stakeholder support in the community for this project. Um, it's really um, important, I think, to all of us that we are doing something that, you know, the onsite and the greater community at large, um, you know, has buy-in, is buying into. So um, these are our stakeholders so far that we're working with, and we'll, we'll draw on them for feedback as the process goes on. So our goals for this project are to improve accessibility and safety while strengthening the connections to the village and enhancing visibility both of the park and views from within the park to the surrounding area. Um, we'll also be pruning and managing the existing trees. So you can see a shot of the sidewalks as they are currently with their, their uh, sort of Z-shaped pavers. Uh, I believe they used to be red, but they're not anymore. This is our anticipated schedule. Uh, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, um, we, we couldn't we couldn't devise a timeline that would have this project completed before this summer. But um, you know we're gonna we're gonna power through and and stuff will get pretty exciting this fall. I think Weston and Samson is currently working on preliminary designs right in here. Uh, so we'll be back before you again with those um, designs once we do have them in hand. So here's a, a view from the park, including the Buzzards Bay Coalition's building right there. Um, as you know, from this park, the views of Onset Bay are completely unsurpassed, but accessibility is a real issue. From the drastic changes in topography to the narrow width of the sidewalks and now the current conditions, the deteriorating conditions of the sidewalks, moving throughout the park can be difficult for people without mobility problems, um, let alone you know, trying to navigate in a wheelchair. It's, it can be extremely difficult or even impossible in some areas. Um, we've actually heard from people who say, yeah, I'll, I'll never go up there you know, with you know, my loved one who's in a wheelchair just because it's, it's steep and there are drastic changes. And that's just another example of that. So what we're going to be doing is we'll be replacing the walks with wider cement concrete walkways. Um, unfortunately, that does mean that we're going to lose the pavers and the, the, the nice design to those. And unfortunately, they won't have the aesthetic appeal that the, the current brick pavers did when they were installed. But this is more durable. It's cost effective. Um, it's going to substantially improve the quality of the walking surface. 
Um, and that's really what we need for this, this park right now. And the gazebo and uh, part of the uh, memorial area here. We have a lot of mature canopy trees. They're beautiful, they provide good shade. Um, and we have the gazebo itself, which is really the park centerpiece, you know, in addition to the great views of the waterway there, um, we'll be making it accessible. And to enable full access, we'll, you know, we'll modify the slope up to it, um, connect a landscape ramp to the structure itself. Uh, we're still exploring exactly how that's going to go, but I know that that was a question that many people have, and we will be addressing the accessibility issues on the gazebo. We'll be refurbishing the fencing. I'm sorry, I went a little too fast on that. This, this fencing here and the, the railway, the railing along the onset Ave here will be re refurbishing or replacing. Um, we're currently trying to determine if we can do something temporarily with this guardrail, this, uh, this area that's actually falling down, uh, which is right behind where this picture was taken. Um, we need, we know we need to do something before summer, you know, gets here and whether it's going to be what will be there forever or something temporarily, we're, we're figuring that out now, but we know that safety is really, you know, a concern here and we want it to be safe for the summer. So we're figuring that out. Let's see here. So there's a, there's a good number of mature trees in this park. Um, just, it's just a wonderful spot. We actually had an arborist from Weston and Sampson evaluate the trees and, and he, you know, this was a Boston area guy and he could not stop talking about the variety of trees and what we have here in this, in this little park. So I thought that was great. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit more in an upcoming slide, uh, but we'll also be enhancing the edges and all of the entrances to the park. So here's a little bit of a breakdown of the uh, in a, of the analysis that's been done to date, um, just showing the existing topography and uh, you know some of the problems that we've run into. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of good stuff going on here, but we, you know, we have we have some needs here. And again, a, an existing topography map, so you can see how how severe that that change in in uh, essentially elevation is when you're trying to navigate this park. Now this shows, um, excuse me, will show uh, shows the trees, the evaluation of the trees uh, that was completed by the arborist. Um, you'll see that we do have to remove a couple trees on the Onset Avenue side of the park. They're actually in, uh, impeding the growth of D3 here, if you can see it. Um, so these two trees have to go and then this one will, will grow taller and be healthier. Um, over on South Boulevard here, we have uh, just a stump uh, that we need to remove and we're replacing a couple of oaks with a low growth species. Um, the power lines there have interfered with the growth of these two trees there and it's just, we can't have a, you know, a, a, a large tree there. So we're gonna, we're gonna replace them with something that will grow better in that area. Um, the arborist is also going to advise the municipal maintenance department on pruning techniques which is great so we can we can uh, keep this park maintained and, and still looking great you know going into the future once this is done. And this is just a view of the special spots and site amenities just showing the various landmarks uh, memorial benches things that we're being considerate of as we're planning this you know this isn't happening in a in a bubble and we're looking for for feedback and and just you know, making sure that this is going to be a park for the, the whole community. Uh, and this is just uh, some views of park entrances. Uh, you probably all recognize this one. Um, and then another one in, in Needham to show sort of these sort of urban type village parks, um, you know, we're, we're sort of drawing on for, for inspiration here. Um, and that's honestly, but that's all we have going on right now. Um, hopefully next time you see me, I'll be with Cassie and I'll have, well, no, I'm coming next week. So it won't be next week, but next time I talk about Baby Park, um, hopefully we'll all be looking at some preliminary designs and, uh, and talking about that. Um, 
Also, Ms. Whiteside is currently on the, the working group as the chairman of the Board of Selectmen, and I've left that up to you and her, uh, which selectmen, you know, I know that there's a, an election coming and change is coming. So um, just let me know who you want to be on the working group and I'll keep you in the loop. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, don't go anywhere. Um, I was able to see this presentation, what, two weeks ago, I guess? Yes. And it, I, it was really exciting to me to see that the, you know, really the, the heart of Onset has some money being spent on it. There are plans to improve it and to make it accessible to all. And I think that's just fabulous. Can you tell me where the funding for this is coming from? So there is, I, I can't speak to exactly how much chapter 90 funding. We have some in-kind services for municipal maintenance. They will be helping rip out the sidewalks and things like that. Um, and I know Mr. Menard has put in, uh, has used or, or is using some chapter 90 funds to help a little bit, but the, the bulk of the money is coming from the community development block grant. And how much is it? Yeah. So that is? Just the community block grant amount, please. It is $279,450. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and unfortunately, this, this budget was made back in March of 2020 or probably several months before. So we're not sure if we're going to need to do some changing of you know what we're doing or, or what's going on with with as soon as we're ready to dig for construction costs but um you know that's something that'll become clear to us as as we go on is you know whether we're going to, i don't think we'll have to scale down the project based on what we're doing but it's you just never know it's it's a weird construction climate out there right now okay thank you very much mr slavin do you have any comments or concerns uh just a, a couple comments uh over the last year year and a half uh, I usually receive a lot of comments from residents at Onset about things in general. Uh, and I asked people, especially on the walkway and the railing, uh, they were pretty, uh, the, the comments were difficult because I told people that we're working on it. You know, you need to <clears throat> give us some time to do it and do it the right way. And you know, the comments were, well, you, people don't care, this and that, you know, we get the normal things we get. And again, you know, my philosophy has always been, if you're gonna do it, you do it right and you do it once. Uh, I told people that we had a we had contracted to do this work and it was gonna take some time to get it lined up and everything else. It's very much like the band shell. Uh, the cost to do things is so excessive today, it's difficult. But here we have a project that we aren't gonna get it done for the summer completely, but we are doing it and we're doing it so we can get it done for the best for the town and for the residents of the area. So again, you know, people need to understand that we have a shot to do things, but we have to do it once and once right. And it, it also has to do with like the lighting, we're getting complaints about the period lighting and everything else. Those lights that we put mm -hmm. in there, which, which basically match in, were built in such a way that the underground wiring and stuff corrodes and goes bad, nice ideas. Again, we're also working on that, but in this case here, this is an example of we're doing this and we're doing it for the best possible end result. And I'm happy to hear that we're gonna be able to do a, at least a temporary fix along the railing there, which I always thought was kind of a very difficult situation. Again, I thank the organization. I agree. And um, if we need to go ahead and uh, need more funding, there are many grants coming down the line right now. So we should look into that as well. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Teitelbaum, any questions, comments, or concerns? Oh, I'm good. Mr. Meniz, um, questions, comments, concerns? If you would please send me, uh, send the BOS a copy of this PowerPoint presentation. You have I, it in all, your packet. I, all I got was a black and white um, copy. So um, a nice color copy would be nice because that way I can look at all the trees. and. You got uh, it. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Absolutely. It translates much better in color. <laughs> yes, it does. Appreciate it. Anything else, Mr. Minis? No, no, okay, thank great. you. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Buckminster. I, I, again, I think when I saw it two weeks ago, I'm going, oh, this is so great. This is so wonderful. It's an opportunity to make something that is gorgeous, accessible, uh, more gorgeous, and, and able, will be able to take care of it better than it is in the shape right now. So I, I very much appreciate your efforts.
Thank you. I think that was really important to us um, just to anything we do. I keep saying, you know, I want Dave, I want Dave Menard to be able to maintain it. You know, you just, you don't know what's coming down the line. <laughs> Everything's crazy, you know, and it's, I, we don't want to have to be doing this again in another 10 years. You know, we want something that's going to last. Exactly. Thank you very much. And have thanks a for having me. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Thank you. Um, Mr. White, would you let Ms. Um, McHale in, please, for the Solar Bylaw Study Committee? Um, did I miss that? What? Good evening. Um, Good evening. Um, it, it's item E, Mr. Um, Meniz, it's the status pre presentation of their study so far. It's just a, it's just a status report. Well, no, no, yes. fine. On item E for me, I have uh, extended outsource serving and establishments, but that's okay. Please go ahead. <laughs> Move forward. Um, yes. Um, Could you I identify? Mean, I, yeah, I, I I'm yeah. Nancy McHale. I'm the chair of the Solar Bylaw Study Committee. I believe that at least one of our other members is here. Her name is Denise Wolk. If if Denise could be let in as well, that would be fabulous. Would she be participating in the presentation? Um, she may have some comments at the end if you, the committee is so inclined to to want that. We just have a, a small. Um, okay. A Ms. short blurb, that would be great. Mr. Wol Mr. White, would you let Ms. Wolk in, please? W-O-L-K. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Um, Denise has been uh, instrumental in helping us with the technology and actually putting the, the complicated bylaw back together again after we've had all of our edits. Um, in terms of the status report, Madam Chair and members of the select board, thank you for this opportunity to present the status report on the work of the Wareham Solar Bylaw Committee. Starting in August of 2021, the committee made up of seven Wareham citizens with diverse backgrounds met two times a month. Since December, the committee has met weekly to fulfill our task of presenting an updated solar bylaw to town meeting. The committee had a steep learning curve and reviewed a sizable amount of research and information, as well as receiving input directly from industry experts and local citizens. On December 8th, we held a very well attended public meeting where we heard from multiple constituent groups. We've used their varied input to inform our work. The committee is proposing a new zoning bylaw, Article 5, Section 90, Section 590, which is intended to replace the existing Section 590. Also included are the associated and necessary changes to Article 3, Section 320 of the use table and Article 16, which is the definitions table. These documents and the warrant article are ready to be submitted to the um, Board of Selectmen's office and the town clerk's office for inclusion in the special spring town meeting warrant. The planning board has already scheduled a public hearing for March 28th for this and other zoning articles. We, we look forward to actually discussing this proposed bylaw with you at a time that's convenient for you. Additionally, during the course of our work, the committee has come to recognize the need for Wareham to develop a much more robust and comprehensive renewable energy strategy. There are so many alternative energy options and new technologies are emerging constantly. We would like to recommend that the Board of Selectmen consider forming a standing committee on renewable energy. The intent is that in conjunction with industry leaders, environmental stewards and town leaders, that they would meet periodically and shape a course of action that anticipates and meets our emerging energy needs while protecting the community and the environment. 
Um, and finally, on behalf of the committee, I would like to thank Mr. Buckland, the planning department, and the IT department for their assistance and patience throughout this entire process. I'd like to thank you, the Board of Selectmen, for the opportunity, for affording us the opportunity to serve the town in this capacity. Um, and that completes my formal status report. Um, thank you. I would ask if anyone has any questions. I just have one comment, um, Ms. McHale. Um, when you submit the documents to the town, town clerk and to the Board of Selectmen office, would you please submit them in Word? Certainly. We can, we can. Thank you, because that makes cutting and pasting into the warrant itself much easier than having to cut and paste something that we can't get into. Thank you very much. <laughs> Absolutely. That's not a problem. Great. Thank you very much. We appreciate um, the opportunity to let you know where we are and how we're doing with this. Ms. Walk, would you choose to uh, address us? I would just say um, it's been a great honor to work as a member of this committee. Um, there's a lot of passion behind solar energy in our town, and there's a lot of misunderstandings about what it is and what the opportunities and uh, are. And it's it's been a really interesting journey to learn more about it. Um, and I think that we have an opportunity. Um, as a small town, as a small community, to really dictate our own terms here and think about how we want this done in our community so that it serves the needs of um, our citizens and also the needs of energy um, now and going forward. You know, with everything that's going on in the world, it's more important than ever that everybody think uh, globally, but act locally. And we're very grateful for the opportunity to do that. Thank you. Mr. Slavin, comments, questions, concerns? Just a couple comments. Uh, as we all know, uh, the state of Massachusetts, I should say the Commonwealth of Massachusetts uh, administration in particular has a, a goal of a tremendous amount of alternative energy. And there's, they're not really very uh, malleable about changing how they're going to get this done. They're pushing extremely hard. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, they're not really looking at the resources of where this energy comes from and how it affects the local communities. So uh, we've been watching, at least from my end, at the state level, et cetera, on what's coming down the line for solar bills. And there are several that are about to be released on us. Uh, I'm hoping that we'll be able to take what, what this particular committee does and be able to implement them. I believe when something is more restrictive than a state bylaw, then we can do that. Uh, but I think we're going to have a little bit of a difficult time because our time frame of when we're putting this before the town members and when these laws are coming down probably will conflict. But again, if they're more restrictive, it's fine because it's allowed. <clears throat> and I appreciate all the work that's been done, and I'm more disappointed at the state level that they're not looking at the local communities to give them the flexibility to do what they need to do, but just putting out a number and saying we've got to make this number, period. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Teitelbaum. Yeah, I'd add to what Alan said, uh, you know, the international situation, which is today we decided we were going to eschew oil imports from Russia, but now we get to go to Venezuela, which isn't exactly uh, a friendly country. We're going to conclude another nuclear deal with Iran so we can start getting their oil, which to me is no better than getting it from the Russians because the Russians sponsor their nuclear program. Uh, and I don't know what other you know bad actors in the world we're going to go out to, and these things are all going to come to bear on the uh, attempts by you know municipalities to to regulate these things. It, you know, with what happens globally, uh, it's going to put even more pressure on this than the internal pressures that this, the Commonwealth has put upon ourselves. So I, I just want you to be aware that that these are going to be considerations and how the state views these things. I think going forward. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Nice. I'm going to stay out of the world politics and just say you did a heck of a job and thank you very much and you did a ton of work in a short period of time. You're making your time frames and much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. I would echo what Mr. Maniz said. I, I know that you really 
when you're working on something and you're ending up doing weekly meetings, that that's extremely difficult. Um, it's a huge time commitment from all of you, and we very much appreciate it. Um, and I would ask um, maybe Nancy, the you and I talked about the renewable energy committee idea. Um, could you send us an email to address to the board of selectmen? And I'll put it on the agenda for next week. But I think it's something that we should be looking at. And uh, so if you just send me you know, a blah, blah email, we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, I will be happy to, to put Thank that you. on the agenda. I will also send you a word document of the, the status report that I just, just presented. Oh, excellent. Thank you so much. So um, that'll be with your records. Yes, okay. actually, you could send that directly to um, Cassandra at okay. in the office, because it will go that. right into the minutes. Thank you so much. Terrific. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Ladies, and thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. And now we will go to, I'm not sure what item it is on your agenda, Mr. Oh, it's F. The, um, the agenda in the packet was different than the one that got posted. There must have been a change late. So mm -hmm. I just brought up the more recent one that was posted on the town website. Yep. So <laughs> we're all good. So um, it's an ex a discussion and possible vote to extend outdoor serving establishment of common Victoria all alcohol licenses under provisions of 138. Excellent. So the reason this is on here is that um, the office had to send letters to all of the establishments who were able to um, use outdoor seating because of the governor's order on June 16th, 2021. Um, and in doing that, the office realized that, oh, we all sort of realized and you know, outdoor dining and drinking and all that is maybe a good idea, maybe not, but um, it, I've put it on here for your ideas. Should we be continuing it? Uh, some of the properties being used were actually town properties. So there's some interesting mm -hmm. um, things that we would have to figure out. But it, it apparently worked very well, not only in Wareham, but certainly the city of Boston um, greatly enjoyed having the ability to have the outdoor um, serving. Mr. Slavin, I'll start with you. Uh, the answer for this one is simply yes. Uh, if you go to any seaside community or community where there's a lot of tourism, there's outdoor dining everywhere as possible. Whatever we can do to promote and help our restaurants and do this, we'll just bring more people into the town. Uh, if the town has to use some town property, as long as we can do it safely, the town administrator is comfortable with it. I have no issue doing this at all. I think we had one request already. And uh, I, most of the towns that I get involved with one way or another are all putting something like this together because they all found that during the COVID, this was one way to increase business and actually allow restaurants to survive. So there is no reason not to do this. Excellent, thank you. Mr. Meniz? Um, I would suggest um, that, that we follow the recommendations the state had put down um, originally where it says licensee that seek to continue patio outdoor service after April 1st, 2022. are encouraged to apply in the ordinary course for an alteration of premises with the local licensing authorities. Otherwise, these amended licenses automatically revert to the status prior to the approval of the expansion of outdoor service of April 1st, 2022. So anybody who's interested should apply. Um, send a, a you know and, and follow the process and where they're looking to do it and what they're looking to do and um, I think we were much more lenient um, during COVID because of the urgency and, and trying to help business to survive and I'm all in favor of it it's just um, there's a process so um, maybe we should set that up and, and as far as using town property um, that's all well and good. It depends on how much, where, and um, 
do we have to give people equal opportunity and access to it? And again, it's process. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moniz. Mr. Teitelbaum. Yeah, we're not able to do anything about this uh, directly uh, because our authority to grant these things without a public hearing ends uh, on the, you know, the April 1st date there. So they're all going to have to come before us with a, a premises uh, alteration application. It's got to be noticed, public hearing, the whole bit, just as if they were starting out, you know, anew with a different floor plan or something like that. So I would, what I would <clears throat> suggest is we take a look in our files and see who did apply and receive the outdoor seating and just let them know that this is what's going on. I mean, I, I would imagine that if you're in the business, you probably know this anyway, but in case anybody out there is unaware that the cease is April 1st without, you know, a premises alteration, then uh, I think we should at least ensure that everybody knows that and maybe can get something in. Uh, it's a little tight right now, hearing wise, but you know, nobody's going to be, uh, April's not a great outdoor dining month in Wareham. So I don't think we have too much to worry about. We're not going to, you know, kill some big uh, holiday weekend by not having it, but we should alert the, uh, the present holders uh, that this is happening, I think. The process. Thank, Thank you. Um, yes, I believe that all of the people who engaged in the outdoor were sent a copy of this um, letter that Mr. Moniz was quoting from, um, saying that you, if you want to continue, you must go through the whole application process through the ABCC, et cetera. But I will make sure tomorrow that all of the people who have been doing it, um, who, were, who were taking advantage of the outdoor seating are notified. Um, I'm, I'll make double sure that that's happening. Um, yes, it will have to be noticed. Yes, there will have to be hearings. The process is going to take several weeks because of the time frame required for advertising and so forth. Um, but I think I hear all of you saying, yes, let's do it. And let's encourage it. We'll yes, listen. Mr. Clavin. Um, Jim's comment about process is exactly right, but just so people understand, uh, at the state level, the Mass Municipal Association, through the particular legislative uh, committee that I serve on as well, uh, is lobbying the governor, et cetera, to extend this time frame to make it a more permanent piece. So then we may be able to get something before April 1st change, but we'll need to follow the current process. But just so people understand, this could be a permanent deal. Excellent. Good news. Any other questions or comments? No? Okay, let's move on then, Mr. Moniz. Let me jump over to this screen here. We're mm -hmm. going to skip G and we're gonna to go to discussion and possible vote to assign the liaison steering to committee. the steering committee. Okay, discussion and possible vote to assign liaison to the DECA steering committee. Chairman Whiteside. Yes, um, we were num we were told by the committee that they would like you to be their liaison. They voted on it and everything, and so I'm looking for a motion, gentlemen. Motion so made for Jim. Thank you. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Can I just say one thing? Sure. Um, I believe it's for an ex officio representative. That's correct. You okay. as a liaison, you have no, no votes. Vote. But we have no. a voice, but we have a voice and no vote as the ex officio. That's how it was described in the town meeting warrant. Right. Voted. Okay, just I just wanted to. Yeah, you're, yes. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, any further discussion on the motion? I will go for a roll call vote then. Mr. Slavin? Yes. Mr. Teitelbaum? Yes. Mr. Meniz? Yes. And myself, yes, four zero zero. Thank you very much. Thank you. And next. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. blah. <laughs> I'm just making sure I'm in the right spot here. Come on, those are my <laughs> words. Mr. Vote the, the, the blah, 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 blah. Wildlife <laughs> in the Division of Conservation and Recreation, 301 CMR 51 notice. P000990, Town of Plymouth and Town of Wareham, Camp Cashelot property. Um, now we've got to go over to this one here. And so this is um, some property on the Plymouth um, Wareham town line. 
Camp Cachalot, and uh, I think Peter said it was Moby Dick Council owned it. And the state is looking to take it, I think, purchase it, um, if I'm correct. And uh, they're looking for us to vote to waive 120 day period and also to have the um, clerk of the board of selectmen to send them notice that we we noticed the meeting and um, the notice of the purchase in uh, at a meeting of the board of selectmen and then the chairman of the board to send a and additionally to send a um, an approval that we we did so and approved it and Excellent. would you like both me to read the motion yeah the, the um there both of the forms are in the packet so if does anybody have any questions about them oh no. didn't jim just make motions um jim's going to make motions yeah i thought he just did oh he I, i'll do it I'll, all right i i, I move to um <laughs> i move the board approve the uh, certificate of announcement pursuant to 301 CMR 51.082 DCR number P00990, Town of Wareham, the clerk, the clerk of the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Wareham, Massachusetts, do hereby certify that on March 8th, 2022, it was announced at a public meeting of the Board of Selectmen that, Selectmen that, Department of Conservation and Recreation, Department of Fish and Game and Vision, Fishes and Wildlife may acquire an interest in a positive land and uh, located in Plymouth and Wareham as shown on attached locust map is exhibit A for conservation or recreation purposes, period. Is there a second to that motion? Second. second. Motion Third. made and seconded. Any further discussion? I will go for a roll call vote, please. Mr. Slavin? Yes. Knees? Yes. Teitelbaum? Yes. Myself, yes. Thank you, Mr. Meniz, next. Okay, um, 120 day waiver statement, DCR number P00990, comma, town of Wareham. Pursuant 301 CMR 51.081B, I, Judith Whiteside, chair of the town of Wareham, board of on behalf of the board, have agreed to waive the 120 day notice period as required by said section as to the possible land approximately 800 acres in the town of Wareham in town of Town of Plymouth and the Town of Wareham, shown in Exhibit A, attached Tier Two, which the Department of Conservation and Recreation, the Department of Fish and Game, and its Division of Fishers and Wildlife are considering acquiring acquiring an interest. Thank you. Second. Made, seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Slavin. Yes. Mr. Meniz. Yes. Mr. Teitelbaum. Yes. Myself. Yes. Thank you very much. And next. Next, I'm jumping to another window here. Excuse me. Um, here we go. Discussion of possible vote. No, 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 no. Discussion of possible vote. I know we did that one. Except donation of the Wareham, donation to the Wareham Free Library in the amount of $7,500 from the Friends of the Wareham Free Library for the purchase of books and materials. I make a motion too. Second. Motion made and seconded. Um, regularly, the Friends of the Wareham Free Library to give us funds, and they specify the use, which is for purchase of books and materials. Very generous um, support from the Friends, as always. Motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion to accept? Roll call vote, right. Mr. Slavin. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, Title bomb. Yes. And myself. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Moving right along. Yep. Uh, discussion and possible vote to approve the opt out fee application for curbside billing FY22 in the amount of $3,286.08 and 08 cents. Um, I move to approve. I move to approve this. Second. Move, motion made and seconded. Hello? Yes, no, I'm looking at the, um, is it okay, uh, Mr. Sullivan, is the okay, is it okay the way it's written with the 273.75 for the mistaken abatement? That, that's a different one. Yeah, it's two different ones. One's, one's mm -hmm. opt out uh, and the other is a, a specific abatement. Okay, Correct. so we're gonna only vote on the um, 
discussion? I, I move. Uh, how about if I repeat oh, it? Yeah, you, you're only going to do the first one because we're not voting yeah. on the 27375. Because there's some question about the paperwork. Okay, so that's the only one I moved on was the first one, which right. was L. Excellent. Is there a second to that? Yes, I second it. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? I will go for a roll call vote, please, Mr. Slavin. Yes. Mr. Menees. Yes. Mr. Teitelbaum. Yes. And myself, yes, four zero zero. We will skip M. Now we're going to N. N. I move we ratify the hiring of Alexis Lynch, part-time senior department assistant in the Board of Health Department. Um, do you want to do them as a group or you want to do them individually? Do them all. Uh, Abigail Dean, full-time communications officer. Cheryl Ethier, part-time communications officer. And Robin Hubley O'Donnell, part-time communications officer. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion on the motion, which is to ratify the hiring? I will go for a roll call vote. Mr. Slavin. Yes. Mr. Menees. Yes. Mr. Teitelbaum. Yes. Myself, yes. Thank you very much. And Mr. Teitelbaum, you are the fastest reader. Would you please do the notice? Yeah, I'm trying to be the fastest scroller and find the right uh, <laughs> one of the 200 pages here. Okay, I've got it. Uh, this is my motion. Town of Wareham, Board of Selectmen, 54 Marion Road, Wareham, Mass, 02571. Notice of April 25th, 2022, special town meeting. Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Plymouth Shire Town, to either of the constables of the Town of Wareham, in the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and in accordance with the provisions of Division 1, Article 1, Section 3 of the Bylaws of the Town of Wareham amended, you're hereby directed to notify and warn the legal voters of the Town of Wareham. This special town meeting has been called by the Board of Selectmen and held at 7.30 p.m. on Monday, April 25th, 2022, at which time the business of the town meeting shall be transacted. The warrant for this meeting will open Friday, March 18th, 2022. The last day for submission of articles to be inserted in the warrant is Monday, March 28th, 2022. Petition articles will be accepted up until 5 p.m. at the above address. The warrant for this meeting will close on Tuesday, March 29th, 2022. And you are hereby directed to serve this notice by posting a test of copy thereof upon the town's principal bulletin board at on or before Wednesday, March 9th, 2022. Here or fail not, make due return of this posting with your doings thereon to the town clerk, given out under our hands at Wareham this eighth day of March in the year 2022. Wareham Board of Selectmen, Judith Whiteside Chair, Patrick Chichopiano Clerk, James M. Menees, Alan H. Slave, and Peter W. Teitelbaum. Is there a second? Second. second. Motion made and seconded. Um, roll call. Any further discussion? No. Um, roll call vote, Mr. Slavin? Yes. Mr. Menees? Yes. Mr. Teitelbaum? Yes. Myself, yes. 400. Zero, zero. We need signatures before 9.30 tomorrow morning, please. There's three on there now. Okay. And now we will move on to the next one, Mr. Menees. Um, discussion and possible vote to recommend articles for the 2022 annual Springtown meeting. Yep. Well, so, we haven't really looked at any of these. I mean, do we have the final budget or any of that stuff? No, but we can do, we can do, one, two, three, and four. Three, four, five. You just, it's there. Hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, let me dig up the score sheet here. Yeah, because we don't have figures for, for um, a number of them. And I was no. questioning that. Any of the ones that were, what is it, one through four is okay? One through four is okay. So why don't you move them? All right, hold on. <laughs> um, I, I move. We have, uh, are we looking to vote on this? Yeah, you're recommending. I to... move the board of uh, selectmen recommend um, articles uh, one through four for spring town meeting warrant. Is there a second? Second. That's okay. favorable action. What? Favorable action. Are we using that term? No, I think we just say re vote to recommend, but we don't. I don't think we vote to recommend the election of officers. No. That's the only yeah. thing. So Article yeah. 1 would be would be just left blank there. OK. Um, so um, any further discussion? I will go for a roll call vote. Mr. Slavin? Yes. Mr. Menees? Yes. Mr. Teitelbaum? Yes. And myself? Yes. 
Okay, so. And I think we're good on um, CPC and also the Division of Natural Resources. What were those, 12 and 14? I'm trying to pull it up. Yes, here. 12 for the Community Preservation Fund Reserves. Right. And 13 is um, a Community Preservation uh, ask for money. Yeah, affordable housing. Yep. Well, that wasn't, well, okay, it's up It's up to you on that. If you want, want me to make a motion and, and uh, get a second for discussion. Um, okay, um, one through 10. Um, okay, we did that. The capital plan we don't have yet. No. Budget, EMS budget, Upper Cape, no. Nope. Water pollution, no. Union contracts, no. So number, did I put it? Yes, I did. We can vote on number 12 and yes, number 14. They are the ones that I have noted on the agenda. Myself too. So, so 12 I, is the Community Preservation Fund Reserves. Correct. Um, I'm trying to, here we go, here we go. I'm, I'm doing what Peter was doing, scrolling. Yep. Yeah. 13 is the 801 village, and that was a pretty big ask, and I would assume there would be a presentation that would come to us. Yes, for that. I've, I've, I've noted on the agenda, we can only vote on 1 through 10 and 12 and 14 this evening. Those are the only ones before us this evening. Okay, hold, hold on here. No, no, I'm just, um, I have different numbers here. Uh, I'm I trying to, huh? I have 12, do you want me to do it? Yeah, please do. Um, it's, it's, okay. I have a different thing on 12, that's why okay. I'm scratching my See head. See if the town will vote to reserve for future appropriation from Community Preservation Act funds, fiscal year 2023, Estimated annual revenues for the following amounts. One, $72,500 for administrative expenses. Two, $145,000 to open space reserves. Three, $145,000 to historical preservation reserves. And four, $145,000 to affordable housing reserves or to do or act in any manner thereof. So I will accept a motion. So made. That's okay. okay. That's a standard one. We get it every year. Yeah. Um, any further discussion on that one? I will go for a roll call vote. This is item number 12. Uh, Slavin? Yes. Um, Manise? Yes. Teitelbaum? Yes. And myself? Yes. And 14, which I can do if you don't have it, Mr. Manise. Um, yeah, I'm getting there. <laughs> I, I I was jumping between screens again. Um, it only take me a second. I'm scrolling. It's okay. All right, I'm just about there. It's page seventy-seven of the hundred and fifty-seven. No, <laughs> no I'm there. Helps. Number fourteen, uh, Article fourteen, Harbor Services permit permit receipts reserved for appropriations account. I move to see. I, I move to approve. Uh, recommend insert, approval. Recommend approval of uh, the amount of four thousand three hundred seventy-five dollars from the Harbor Services Permit Receipt Reserve for Appropriations Account to be transferred to the Harbor Masses Maintenance Improvement Account, or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion, Mr. Slavin? Yes. Mr. Manis. Yes. Mr. Teitelbaum? Yes. And myself, yes, okay. And now we will move on to... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, Mr. Minnie has done one. a lot of homework on this next item, gentlemen, so yes. let, him, let him do it. <laughs> now, um, I, mo I move to vote to release executive session minute meetings. Uh, meeting minutes previously accepted March 22nd, 2011, February 7th, 2012, April 24th, 2012, August 7th, 2014, August 25th, 2015, March 8th, 2016, March 15th, 2016, April 12th, 2016, November 8th, 2016, December 13th, 2016. 
May 9th, 2017, May 23rd, 2017, May 31st, 2017, August 1st, 2017, August 14th, 2017, September 12th, 2017, October 10th, 2017, October 17th, 2017, March 27th, 2018, October 9th, 2018, April 30th, 2019, and February 18th, 2020. Second. Motion made and seconded. Um, I will make the comment that all of these have been reviewed by town council to make sure that they're all set to release. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Slavin? Yes. Mr. Menese? Yes. Mr. Teitelbaum? Yes. And myself? Yes. Awesome. No 48 hour business. So we'll go to the TA who has some nice pictures in his office right now. Yeah, this is uh, this is actually my wife's office. I get the basement when I'm doing this. <laughs> usually, but oh, she's well, out of, think, yeah. it's, better than, it's better than the garage. Like, let me yeah. tell you that. <laughs> she, she's out of town, but I could give votes like this would be nay and this one would be yay. <laughs> so we ever want to do that. Uh, okay. Not too much of everything that's going on, but I just want to remind everybody, I think we should have the office send out uh, reminders to the owners that May 1 starts the nip ban, the nip bottle ban. That's when it goes into yeah. effect. And we should probably send out those notifications. Oh. And we should all practice going to like New Zealand or someplace, so they can't find us to complain. <laughs> good idea, Mr. Sullivan. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Anything else, sir? No, ma'am. Oh. Okay. Um, I, I have to get back to the kiddos. <laughs> okay. So I'm. I did skip over board's comments. So let's do board's comments and liaison initiative reports all together. One, two, three, Mr. Slavin. Okay, uh, I don't know. I think Jim also, besides myself, listened to the uh, finance committee uh, things last. Uh, I think it was Thursday, where they brought in cer certain departments, and Mr. Sullivan was there all day as well. I think till three o'clock, whatever. Again, it's extremely enlightening, and it gives people a good idea of what's happening. Every one of the departments, what they need, why they need it, etc. Uh, it was on Zoom, of course, so. I'm hoping some people took some time to listen to it to explain better what happens there. Um, had a meeting uh, just before this meeting with the South Coast Bikeway Alliance. Uh, Marion and Wareham have agreed to go ahead with the Route 6 uh, extension of the bike path, uh, the county road bike path uh, that was originally proposed. has been basically decided it's not feasible due to the different problems with the county road, etc. So this particular organization will go ahead and, and work with uh, MassDOT uh, on the bike path for these areas. Uh, we basically have approval from uh, the we, we, the bridge that's being replaced down to the new Swift Beach light that's coming in about a, a little over a year, most likely. And then the rest of the way down into Wareham itself. Uh, as far as that goes, what else we got? Uh, there was a meeting with the Buzzard Bay Coalition and SNEP uh, on uh, different ways of projects to help with the uh, communities on uh, planning and restoration of uh, waterways, et cetera, and, and restoration of areas as well. There was also an MSA meeting, uh, which is the Mass Select Board Association meeting on local grants and the one-stop program to help the, the communities figure out how to work all that out. And let's see what else we got. I will ask again, those people who volunteered for the bike path committee, I'd ask the office to contact them so we can get this committee up and running. They did. Okay, I haven't seen it yet, but it's fine. And uh, the Cape Verdean uh, festival is coming hopefully in August of this year. I've, they've reached out to me to ask if we would do a car show for them. So uh, we'll have an additional piece of what they do as well. And I think that's, Enough for now, because I'm ready to go to sleep. Goodness. Mr. Minis. Um, I'll, I'll echo uh, what 
Uh, Selectman Slavin said about the FinCom last Thursday, all day, uh, eight to three. Um, Chairman Pigeon did an excellent job. Um, did an excellent job uh, moving it through, and uh, it isn't easy. And, uh, and the members were there. I, I actually started out on um, Zoom, and then I, I went in. I got there uh, probably about nine, and um, I have to give them a lot of credit. That's a that's a bear of a day, and uh, you know all the directors came in and gave their reports and. Um, as uh, Mr. Slavin said, uh, town administrators there and, and um, filled in uh, certain things when he had to, and it's quite the process. Um, I have to give him a lot of credit, all of everybody, a lot of credit for, you know, bringing this about, and uh, it's a lot of work. And then also, I had mentioned that last week the uh, Carver Wareham Regional Refuse District, um, we did, we we discussed and we made an offer. And I don't uh, to uh, for for a new law firm, and I don't know what the outcome is yet, but um, hopefully it'll all work out, and we'll just be moving forward. That's it for right now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Teitelbaum. Uh, nothing. Thank you, and myself, nothing. And moving ahead, then. Uh, oh, what? Yes, Mr. Slavin. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm getting a little tired. Um, during the ribbon cutting and afterwards, I. Uh, officially requested from Senator Pacheco $120,000 for the control gate crossing engineering study, just so see how that works out. And also from Congressman Keating, we've gone ahead and made a, a request through uh, Michael Jackman as aide for only $148 million for the potential uh, project for the Wareham, uh, she's laughing, Wareham Pollution Control Facility, the Buzz's Bay project, which we've all seen the part of the actual pamphlet, etc. So what the hell? Basically, why not ask for everything we can get our hands on? So that request is going in. That would be a, a federal earmark, and Senator Pacheco's office would be a, a state earmark. If they both come down, I'm going to Cuba. Okay. Yeah, well, that might be a good place for you. Um, moving along, Mr. Um, Maniz, item Consent 12, agenda. sir. Consent agenda. Consent agenda? Yes, sir. There's no bills and documents. Um, so it's the approval of meeting minutes of December 14th, 2021, December 31st, 2021, January 4th, 2022, February 1st, 2022, February 8th, 2022, and February 15th, 2022. Second. I'm going to adjourn uh, shortly here. What? Just approving the last set of minutes now. Bob, we can hear you. Um, there was a motion and a second. I'm going to go for a roll call vote, please, <laughs> Mr. Slavin. Yes. Mr. Meniz. Yes. Mr. Teitelbaum. Yes. And myself, yes. Thank you. And Mr. Meniz. Make a motion to approve the executive session minutes and hold for December 14th, 2021, January 4th, 2022. February 8th, February 8th, 2022, and February 15th, 2022. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion on those to accept and hold? I will go for a roll call vote. Mr. Slavin. Yes. Mr. Meniz. Yes. Teitelbaum. Yes. And myself. Yes, 400. And as you know, um, I have decided we will not have our executive session this week. We will have it next week. It will be posted exactly the way that you see it. Um, it would not be appropriate to have the, it without town council present. And therefore, gentlemen. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made is seconded to adjourn, not debatable. All those in favor, Mr. Slavin. Yes. Mr. Meniz. Yes. Mr. Teitelbaum. Yes. And myself, yes. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank and thank you very much, Mr. Sullivan. Good evening, Wareham. Good night. Thank you. Good night.